staying alive. surprise you oh my gosh <laughs> bro that is really that freaking nuts. freaking heavy the warrior with the flintlock what's not to like the book that i started reading is you guys have probably heard of it it's the sand county almanac aldo leopold was like the father of like the conservation aldo, yeah. movement the first forward opening line, I was like, this is so relevant. Even today, he wrote this like almost a hundred years ago now, talking about the, the downside of like economic progress. We abuse land because we regard it as a commodity belonging to us. When we see land as a community in which we belong, we may begin to use it with love and respect. There is no other way for land to survive the impact of mechanized man, nor for us to reap from it the aesthetic harvest it is capable, under science, of contributing to culture. That land as a community is the basic concept of ecology, but that land is to be loved and respected is an extension of ethics. Land yields a cultural harvest is a fact long known, but latterly also forgotten. Is there a foundation that does primary, like, Nia show conservation? Uh, no. I don't know why I'd rather, like, have something done and given to people rather than ask people to do it with us and then give it to people. Some of it I, I get, like, it's worth taking the time to do that, especially if it's, like, a, a longer-term thing of, like, hey, we want to, like, on a continual basis contribute to this mm -hmm. thing. I don't think that at our current capacity that we could do that well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did we go internal and then... Well, we, ju we just posted an internal. Yesterday. Yeah. Don't give me that. I mean, that's sick right there, bro. That's the stuff. Daniel, Kyle, Kyle. Pick your favorite. All right. Thanks, 20 minutes away. Okay. You got work. I've got family to take care of. <laughs> Going to Bentonville, baby. <laughs> I got to text Dan about these Sims hoodies. I said, hey, uh, what's the what's the deal on the Sims hoodies? He said, Lo, let me send you an email. I said, great, sounds good. He never said anything. So I said, were well, you going to send me some hoodies, some Sims hoodie info? He was like, yeah, I'll email you this morning. Never did. So then I hit him up a day later, or a couple days later. I said, holler at me when you get a chance. Blah, blah, blah. A week goes by. Sunday. Dan, yo, sorry I'm the worst. I said, you're not the worst. I'm the worst. Hope you're feeling better. He said, no, I'm the worst because I still haven't sent you the info. <laughs> I said, well, that's true. You haven't sent me the info. It is untrue that you're the worst. But please send me the info. <laughs> Man, we are headed out. We got some, some chores to go do. We went by the bank earlier. Got everything situated, set up. We're going out to my land. This is property that we've had for about two years now. We'll be able to go down here and, and fish. We're going to set up a fire and, and cook some dinner. Have a good time. Spring go. Not even wrong. Yeah. And Peter will just set out. I'm sure you've seen them all driving through how they set it out for the city. Yeah. I just got a bunch of good firewood. <laughs> not, a branch, not a branch on one. I mean, it's true wood. It just needs cut down and then it needs split. My. Dash says it is 88 degrees. So it'll be a little, a little toasty. It's a sick chair, dude. It's two chairs. Two chairs. You know what? I'm gonna back up a little bit closer to the water. Oh, it's always the worst part. All right. You need some?
shouldn't have to worry about snakes too much. We've got to go fill up the trail camera with batteries. And then after we do that, we're going to come back and try to fish a little bit. Well, how the heck do you get this battery? Eject. <laughs> <laughs> it's expensive to like fill them up every time, but it lasts so long. I think the last time I filled this camera up with batteries, honestly, it could have been like maybe a year ago, legit. Which is kind of the whole point of a cell camera. So you might be asking, hey, what kind of batteries does that guy use? And you're probably not asking that. <laughs> but if you were wondering, these are energizers. However, I will say, if you go to your local Sam's Club, they have a 48 pack of batteries for, I think it's like 16.98, 17 bucks, 48 pack. I put my stand right here. Part of, part of when you buy a property and you start figuring out, one, you can do a lot of scouting by yourself just by looking at sign, like what's on the ground. But what I noticed a lot last year when I was hunting was just the, the patterns of the deer where they were coming from. The river down there, which kind of acts as a natural boundary and then you've got a really steep ridge that goes up there. And so what I've seen them do a lot of times is come right through the middle of this, right where it's low and flat. My neighbor's property is right over there. It's pretty cleared, it's a lot more cleared. So a lot of times if I can sit right in here and look out there, I can see them coming. And most of the time they're coming either right up over there or right through here, just kind of walking that border of the river, looking for food, you know, just on their, on their main trails. I had two really nice eight points walk through last year. One, I just never got a shot at. He was moving so fast and the other I actually missed. Coming from that direction, headed this way down this road and I was set up about, it was a long shot, 35, 40 yards. And um, it was 40 from here. I had got him there at 30 and I couldn't get him stopped until he got to here. So by the time I finally got him stopped, turned broadside, it was 40 and I never readjusted to bring it up a little bit and I sent it like two yards under him. I can't tell what that is. It might be a gar. We're doing this the old fashioned way. Who would have done this? Huck Finn? Tom Sawyer? Did he write Huck Finn? Which is my literary knowledge. Mark Twain, right? Mark Twain. Some old hillbilly in some old book would have done this. I already know that. Oh. He just looked at it. You see that commotion? I wonder. I don't really have a gar fly. But he definitely checked it out. Right where I want to put it. Little nibble. There's a big fish over there. Gotta go try Started working out a little bit more. What are you doing? Kettlebells. Seems like it's going well. I don't know. I'm not ripped yet. <laughs> but I'm on my way. <laughs> oh, there's some snakes. Oh here. my. That's a good size one. It's obviously not full length, but he's not a baby. We're on this huge slab and it's really like six inches shallow all the way out to about the middle of the river. So this isn't what I would call ideal smallmouth habitat. You need to catch a fish, man.
All right, we are going to head back to camp. Um, we caught a few fish, but we didn't get any of them on camera. We're going to head back to the campfire. Going to make some dinner. I got some kebabs. I got some jalapeno poppers. I got one for me and one for you. So we're going to cook it up over the fire, sit down and enjoy the outdoors, and have a good time. Check out our new our new knife. This is coming out in fall of 2024. This was put together by our buddy Garrett Polk, who we've done an, an interview with. We've got an episode with Garrett Polk Knives. It's all materials from the Ozarks. The story, the background, everything is here in the Ozarks. It's a great knife. I've been using it for the last three or four months, and it does everything that I need to. Haven't had to sharpen it yet, so we think it's gonna be cool. We've got some kebabs going. We've got some uh, jalapeno poppers. Should we take a bite? Mm. Oh my goodness. Dude, there's just something about cooking over a fire. Like this probably doesn't even taste all that good, but outside is a 10 out of 10. That's good stuff.